groovy. Uh, <laughs> the movie along next we're going to talk with Jessica Aldridge. Um, she is the host of Eco Justice Radio, which is a weekly broadcast produced by SoCal350.org. Um, and it's been around since 2017, covering environmental and climate stories from social justice frame um, and featuring voices not necessarily heard on traditional mainstream or even public media outlets. Um, she's also the founder of Adventures in waste and is a longtime environmentalist. She's been working about 15 years in zero waste. Um, and she, you can find the Eco Justice Radio um, podcast um, on Spotify, Apple, um, and Google Podcasts and SoundCloud too. So it's all there um, at ecojusticeradio.org. And um, Jessica, do you mind if I share? Our, our story, our email story. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. So, so I don't know, I've never met Jessica, I've never seen her, um, just saw Eco Justice Radio and, you know, saw like the topics and, you know, saw like the people she interviewed and, you know, when I, I kind of Instagram stalked her, like looked through her photos and I thought she was black. I thought, <laughs> So I was like, oh, you know, you know, we we cut black folks come in all shades, you know. She's just, you know, African. That's cool. And she was like, I'm not, I'm white. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's really cool because it speaks to, you know, really being an ally and really stepping it up and having a platform, you know, that you use to uplift. Um, so it was, you know, funny, but really inspiring. And so Jessica, I kind of want to ask about that, like how, mm -hmm. what made you become an ally, become, you know, what we're talking, you know, we hear about being anti-racist and being an ally. How did you come to um, you know, because you, you really are. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. And I, I try my best every single day and I open myself up to, to listen and learn as much as I possibly can. And I don't think that we stop at just, oh, I'm an ally and that's where it stops. But you, you work on, you work on that consistently every single day. You make sure that you're educating yourself. You make sure that you're listening to what's being said out there. And and I try, I try my best. Um, and with the radio show, we we say um, that it's, we're uplifting the voices not necessarily heard on traditional mainstream or even public media outlets, because we even, I, I even notice on the public media outlets, it's the same voices and those voices are amazing. And they're from the organizations that, that really are doing some great work, but it's the same voices. And we're not hearing about the farmalies, you know, the, the family farm army armies. We're not hearing about what our guests have been speaking about as much on these public media outlets. We're not sharing and amplifying, amplifying that community voice. And so, you know, for me and, and through SoCal 350, which is where the platform for Eco Justice Radio started, and I've been with them for two years, it's just, it's, it's that opportunity to be able to be like that, you know, I, I'm able to utilize what's available to me um, in my background of, I come also from the entertainment industry to be able to take that and say, okay, how I want to hear from other people. And maybe it's a little selfish on my end too, because I want to continue educating myself. So I want to hear these stories. And so if I want to hear these stories, I want other people to hear these stories. And, and I think that's, um, it's really where that comes from. No, it's a very, it's, you know, how can you not be selfish um, when it comes to that? You know, you, who doesn't want a better world than to educate yourself? So thanks. So that's the beauty of being selfish and taking self-care. Cool. Um, and who, how do you get your guests to come on for eco, like, where are you finding these community members? Yeah, well, um, so we have an array. Uh, there's two co-hosts. There's myself and I, I go on every, our show goes every, we film on Fridays, but our show airs on Thursdays. And so every other Thursdays, my show, Carrie Kim is the other host and her shows air the other 
um, times. And it's, we have the different circles that we move within as well. She's, we focus on all aspects of environmental and social justice, but then we have those areas where, where we have a, a more centralized focus where she, she focuses a lot on indigenous rights and culture as well as permaculture. And then I'm more in the environmental activism and waste industry as well, but it, we still broaden that topic out um, at the extreme. But then how do I find those voices? I, you know, I, I'm in within that environmental community. I, you know, think of a, I, I hear what people are saying. I, you know, read through our social media, you know, what's happening on social media. I said, that's, that's a, a point of interest that I think should be amplified, that should have this platform and, and, and be able to um, get that information out there further. And then I, I hope through my network that, you know, I reach out directly sometimes, but also through a network to try to, to be able to make those connections. So the network is so very important. And sometimes I feel like my network is really small, but, you know, it, it probably isn't as small as I'm thinking it is. But then, you know, just that continuing of that broadening of that network to, to invite people on. I mean, I'm literally writing notes right now when this be, everyone's been talking and I'm like, oh yeah, I need to get them on, you know, oh, we need to talk about that. Like, I've just got this list of notes. <laughs> <laughs> we need to talk about, we need to talk about community farming more, you know, we do, but I, I want, I want to amplify the voices even more so, so. Very cool. Yeah, no, we're, we're inspiring each other. Like, this is so cool. Um, and then, um, so with that, we also, um, you told me, because before I found out you, you were white, um, I had a whole different set of questions there, honestly. <laughs> I got the answers to those too. <laughs> yeah, um, but um, you know, like a lot of times, I am I'm the only black person, especially the only black woman. It's very, you know, in the room a lot of times. And you were telling me the story about, um, you know, the woman, the presenter, talking about everyone, you know, can have a reusable water bottle, and you spoke up, um, yes. and um, it just shows again, like you have to be an ally because what if you never said anything, you know, um, and just, you know, no one, you educated people. So um, it's just, yeah, just really inspiring that you can talk about that. And maybe you can, you know, um, just because we're recording this, maybe mm -hmm. say why, you know, as zero waste or why saying everyone needs to have a reasonable bottle is it always cool? Yeah, yeah. So, so this experience that, that we were talking about um, the other day, I I went to a panel discussion of some extremely popular uh, zero waste social media zero waste uh, in um, influencers. It's kind of like an odd word for me, but and they're 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 popular through the social media network and and in the zero waste community a lot of the popularity around zero waste is usually centered around white females. It's not always the case, but it, that, that there's a, a large saturation there. And the audience said, well, if I'm gonna do one zero waste thing, what is it that I can do? And she's said, uh, oh yeah, you can just, you should just get a reusable water bottle. It's really easy. You could have like your cup or you can have your water bottle, whatever you can afford, but you, but that's the easiest one you can do to reduce your footprint. And that that's the one that just really, I. I guess I, I grab onto that one a lot because I, I just think that there's so much um, inaccessibility when it comes to water that not everyone has that choice. And the reduce and reuse is not always available to everyone given where we live, our income, our quality of water or air, our responsibility to our family, the, the job that we have, the jobs that we might have, our well-being, because we're all, we may be different, differently abled. It differs from neighbor to neighbor, from person to person, and we don't all have the same privileges. So these people who are saying, oh, this is the thing you do, they're also the ones that are like, well, if you fill this up with some trash, this is this is the definition of zero waste, and it's not, you know? And we need to look at connecting these issues because we can't just look at what the downstream is if we're throwing away a water bottle. We have to, and we can't just look at the switch out mentality of like switching out one item for another. We need to look at what are what what is accessible to everyone? What are the issues that are happening in communities that they have to deal with that they may not have the ability the the accessibility to have 
to, to be able to get to these products. And zero waste is a conservation of resources by means of responsible production, consumption, resource, and recovery of products and packaging and materials without burning and no discharge to land, water, or air that threaten the environment or human health. So if, we, if we're gonna get to zero waste, we need to get rid of environmental, systemic, and institutional racism so that we can all have the same opportunities. And when it comes to water, that's a huge environmental racism issue. That's a huge institutional issue because clean, safe, reliable, affordable, um, and the security, the future security of water should is non-negotiable, but it seems to be negotiable. It seems that it in many places, places like Flint, Michigan, where their leads are where their pipes are so old that lead is leaping leaping into their pipes, or Willowbrook in uh, Southern California, because they have a uh, uh, polluted water system and that their Sativa uh, LA County district was not taking care of the water there. And for 20 plus years, they were not able to drink their own water. So there's no way that these people can walk, these people, these black communities, these um, indigenous communities, these communities of color can walk up and fill up their water bottle. They can't even go down the store and fill up their water bottle. They can't go into their schools and fill up their water bottle. So we have to be very cautious with what we're asking other people to do. And if we're asking other people to do those things, then we as zero waste allies, and I'm talking about we white people, the people on here, I'm white, us white people, we need to stand in allyship with those communities to say, okay, if I think someone should be using a water bottle, why is it that they can't? What can I do to, to ensure that they can? If I'm a business, if I have a zero waste business is telling people to use a water bottle, am I donating a percentage of my funds to go to building out proper water infrastructure in those places that they're not able to actually drink their water? Um, so, yeah. <laughs> So it's it's not it's not favorable to all. It's not accessible to all. And 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 when if we don't connect those dots, then we can't truly push forward on zero waste models and a zero waste city. Yes, 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 yes. Um, whew. No, it's that's perfect. You know, um, it just yeah. I, I don't even know what to say after that. You said everything. <laughs> and your passion, you know, um, of saying it. And it's so, 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 so real and so essential. And if ever we wanted to have, you know, our zero waste future and our, you know, just justice, our just a just system, um, time is now and we need to get together our, our farm, families are you know our allies you know um get it together you know going into the favelas and showing folks how you know you can hey grow it grow your herbs so cool <laughs> um i have one link that maybe people might be interested in i'll put it in yeah. the, in the chat i'll put a couple of hashtags and stuff like that in there not hashtags uh um uh Instagram accounts, but Ayana Elizabeth Johnson, who's a, a, a black uh, woman, a marine biologist, an amazing, powerful woman. She, she put out this article about how racism, racism derails our efforts to save the environment. And it's, it's a wonderful article. And I'd really, um, tell people to please, uh, to, to check this article out. And it, it's talking about, you know, that, these communities are it's black Americans, indigenous people of color are disproportionately um, going to to fill the effects of the climate crisis more than white Americans are going to. And they're going to be more concerned about it, but they also have to be concerned about structural racism, mass incarceration, state violence. And so environmental issues become this become one point in this long line of threats. And, and, and until we can end environmental racism, we're not going to, to get away from the environmental issues that are plaguing us. Yeah, it's definitely a conversation that, you know, when I, you know, I me mean, as a black one, when I go to, you know, talk to other black folks and they, I've had it told to me many times, like, that's not an issue for me. And it is, but, we don't we don't see it as separate from racism sometimes, and it is it is the racist system that is environmental issues. 
um, and that we are affected by it. So cool. I can't wait to read that article. Cool. All right. Thanks, Jessica, joining us from LA. Very <laughs> now see your face. Cool. <laughs> I look forward to um hearing more podcasts with you. Cool. Thanks. <laughs>